hard to make the fake bucks. I know. <laughs> She's gonna get a raise. <laughs> She'll stand on a crate. Stay on the crate. She'll get a raise there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can get a bigger one for a bigger raise. <laughs> now I do have an announcement to make, y'all, and this is serious. I'm not playing. And I'm not. I'm not playing at all. This is very serious. Um, it's been bothering me for a long time, and I want y'all out there to understand it. You know, I'm not a perfect man. None of us are. I'm not a perfect man at all, but what I'm about to say, I don't think the girls and Kathy don't even know it. And what, what bothers me is that I've been this way since birth. I've been this way for a long time. And I've always tried to fight it. I've always tried to, not fight it, that's not a good way of saying it. I've always tried to accept it as a blessing, because it is a blessing. And I know other people have dealt with it, but other people that are in the wrong have celebrated it, which I don't understand. Do you understand what I'm saying? When something's wrong, they think it's something good. Does that make sense? I don't understand this because I don't understand why people are the way they are. But I think the people, we live in such a sinful world today, we celebrate sin. Mm -hmm. And we call bad good and good bad. And folks, I think it's about time that we, that we just say it for what it is. And I'm going to announce something to you that may shock you. And I want you to still love me when I say it. If you're on the uh, if you're on the phone, please, or I have your phone on. This is church time. Please listen. This is God's time. It's not Pete's time. It's God's time. You put everything away for God. Amen. God puts everything for us. We should do that for Him. He could take away things that are a distraction. And I pray he does. I'm here to announce to you this evening. I'm straight. Woo whoopie doo. I don't think CBS, NBC, PMS, NBC, and all the other stations will care. This past week, two famous people have come out and said they were gay. And the media applauded them, gave a standing ovation, and said, we love you. Here's what ticked me off. The Pope said, God loves you. What? Hold on, let's back up here. What did the Pope say? Pope says, God loves you even if you're gay. God loves you even if you're homosexual. God loves you. Like you are. Hold on, I'm just going to get good now. God loves those he changes. Amen. God loves those that He saves, redeems, and He changes. Amen? Amen? He does not love you the way you are. Mm -hmm. He cannot love you the way you are or the way I am. He has to cleanse you with His blood from all sin. Mm -hmm. And then He has to redeem you from all sin debt. Then He has to put His Spirit in you, a new mind, a new heart, new everything before he can even do anything with you. God does not accept the way you are out there. I don't care what the Pope says. I don't care what the Muslim world says. I don't care what the One World Church says. God does not love you the way you are. He has to change your life. He has to change you. You have to be born again for him to have any part with you. That's the truth. Now, a lot of people don't like that theology because they don't want to change. 
We want to hold on to our sins. We want to hold on to who we are to please other people, but forget about God. We want to hold on to please ourselves and not God. I want to tell you something, folks. Christianity is not a walk in the park. you got to change. If you're a drinker, you're going to stop drinking. If you're a smoker, you're going to stop smoking. If you are a carouser, you're going to stop carousing. You have to do an about face 180, 360, or whatever degrees there is to it. You have to change your life for Jesus. You are not good the way you are. We are not good in our sins. I don't care how many famous celebrities. Let me tell you something about Hollywood. Let me break this down to Hollywood. You're there to entertain us. That's it. So we won't get bored. Amen? Amen? You don't dictate your beliefs to me. I don't follow your ways. I don't follow your political beliefs. I, I don't... Crap! That's what you are. That was, that's tame. That's, 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 that's just perfectly honest. You're only there to entertain us. That's it. Okay? That's it. You're there to entertain us. So we won't get bored. So we won't pull our hair out. So we won't get on each other's nerves. We go to movies and enjoy it for, what, three or four hours, two hours? We come back and it's the same world. I know people that stay in movies all day because they don't want to face the world. <laughs> Is that true? Money? I'm embarrassed to say this. I am. I get I get ragged on for buying refills. Dollar fifty. I get ragged on for that. Folks, that's nothing compared to the hundreds and thousands of dollars we spent on music, amen, mm -hmm. movies, and crap. I know I know families that would rather starve and have things than to have food on the table and have nothing. Hmm. What's wrong with this picture? Priorities. Priorities. Oh my God. Priorities. What is your priority? People think laughing all the time is good. Do you laugh all the time? No. No. I'm not bad. Huh? I do my best. I'm really okay. too much serious. okay. Seriousness, Sorry. yeah. We have to laugh sometimes. But we don't laugh all the time. Not 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Twice on Sunday. You think God laughs all the time? No. You think God's laughing right now? No. Folks, here's, here's, here's the rubber meeting the road. Jesus Christ is coming back. And He's coming back soon. And right now, the world, the, the shape that we're in right now, he left his bride for a season so she could prepare herself and make herself ready. And he's coming back. How do you think the bride is right now? Not prepared. Not prepared. Tame. She's carousing. Like, hey! Nothing has a problem. I think we don't take Christ serious like we should. Now you probably say, well, wait, wait a minute, Pastor. No, 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 don't wait a minute at me. Don't, don't, don't wait a minute. First of all, when God says He loves you, that should change your life right there. Mm -hmm. When God says He loves you, you should stop what you're doing and look to Him and focus on Him. Amen? When God says He loves you, everything stops. I mean everything. Everything stops when He says He loves you. And I'm just getting to a point and I don't want ever my family to do this. I don't want them to never do this, and I don't think they will. But we should never put God in second place. We should never put God in third place. We should never put God in fourth place. But most of all, we should never put God in last place. And I think that's what we're doing. And yeah, I did announce that, that I'm straight. And people said, well, you're making a mockery. You don't think you're making a mockery of going the other way against God? You don't think you're, you're mocking God when you say you're gay? You don't think you're mocking God when you say God loves you the way you are? You don't think you're mocking God by doing those things? You think everything is fine? You don't think God is, is, is going to forget this and sweep it under the rug and be, hey, you know, be good buddies and laugh it off? You know, God has a sense of humor. 
But God is dead serious about sin. And that's what we're talking about tonight. He sent His only begotten Son, who knew no sin, who did nothing wrong, to die for our sins. Now, I want you to, I want you to think about that for a minute. He died for our sins. He did not have to die for our sins. He, did not, he was not obligated to die to give His life for us. He was not obligated to come down and die on the cross. He was not obligated. But at the same time, at the same time, we should appreciate the fact that everything He did for us. And we should never mock God by accepting sin. We should never ever laugh at God's face and say, you know what, we'd rather be politically correct and fashionable rather than holy and spiritual. And I think that's the problem that we're coming to this point. The state of Texas is facing the battle to keep out gay marriage. And I want to tell you this right now, folks, if every Christian in the state of Texas were to band together, this would be killed off quick. Mm -hmm. But see, you know what's wrong with us? We're too busy. We're too busy doing other things rather than doing God's things. We're too busy doing our agenda rather than God's word. We're too busy being busy rather than busy doing his work. And when you, if you think you got time, you don't have time. Tomorrow's never promised to us. God says, you know what, when your time's up, it is up. That's it. And, and the world needs to understand and focus on this fact. That Jesus Christ is coming back, whether we are ready or not. Jesus Christ is coming back when we are found faithful or not. Jesus Christ is coming back, period. And I don't think we really care anymore. Because why? We're too busy. I don't want us to be busy. I want us to be focused on Him. I don't want us to care about what goes on around us. I want us to be focused on Him. Sometimes we look what's in front of us, but we don't look what's ahead of us, right? We look at what's in front of us, but we don't see the whole picture ahead of us. And what I see ahead of us right now is Jesus Christ ready to come back. He is right there and He's looking at us. You think he's smiling? Mm -hmm. He's very sad. Do you think he's laughing? No. Is now, is, is Satan laughing? Satan is laughing. Satan's having You know what? I, I think Satan to me, when I saw the movie The Joker, I saw Satan. Right. Mm -hmm. He laughs. The Joker laughed so much that he had his laugh print imprinted on his face. Have you noticed that? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He laughed so much that his face was just imprinted. I mean, his face was just like a glorified monkey, just smiling all the time. And then I looked at that and I'm thinking, golly, he must have laughed an awful lot to have his face that way. You know, people that laugh all a lot, you can tell by their face. Woo! You know, they, they have it. Yeah, when I saw the Joker, the Joker's face, he laughed so much. And what do you think he laughed at? Sin. Sin. Oh, Mr. Ed, the wis wisdom has spoken. He was laughing at sin. You think the devil laughs at sins? Mm -hmm. You don't think he laughs when we fail? You don't, I mean, he throws a... If a believer in Jesus Christ falls, he throws a major party and there's, there's laughter. He wants us to fail. He wants us to fall. Let us not help him do that. Let us not make his job easier in falling, in sin. And I think we do. I think we help the devil way too much instead of glorifying and walking with Jesus. And I'm going to give an example of that this evening. In 2 Chronicles 7, I'm going to show you in the Bible of this. We talked about Revelation 18 and the fall of Babylon. Okay, 2 Chronicles 7, and I'm going to start here verse 11. We're going to apply some very ba uh, basic biblical 
precepts here this evening. And here are some. This is awesome. I mean, when you get a hold of this, you're gonna you're gonna just rejoice. You're gonna thank God. Let me. I also, God just told me to tell you this right now. God says this, and I think someone. I think all of us need to hear. It, but there's some people in particular that need to hear this. You ready? God wants you to be respected. But not liked. Does that make sense to some of you? God wants you to be respected but not liked. Why why do you like people? Because they they're funny? Are they good? Why do we like people? Because they make us feel good. Why do you like a certain music? It makes you feel good. Why do you like a certain band? Because you like them because they're good in some way to you. But if we're going to be a leader in our homes, if we're going to finally have a godly leader in the White House, God says you need to be respected. Respect is much more. I know a lot of people that don't respect their parents. <laughs> But they respect their teacher or they respect that person in their life that's godly. Why? You say, that's screwed up, isn't it? I respected this man over here. Right here. That's a man. He never left his wife. He never threw his ring down. He never said the D word. He was always at home. He was supposed to be. He never went out with the boys. But most of all, he loved God. He joked when he joked. And us? This is my baby brother. He's 6'3", over 300 pounds. That's my baby brother. He can play for the Dallas Cowboys. He was respected. Did we like everything he did at the time we did? Because we were kids. We were snot-nosed kids that didn't know anything. But in life, in time, we respected the man. We respected him. You know, and I miss him. He was my teacher. He told me things that sons don't teach their uh, the fathers don't teach their sons. He told me, he, he, the first story that I heard growing up, what do you think it was? Noah's Ark. We didn't have a story with the three bears or... Disney, no, he got out his Bible and he said, let me tell you a story about this. And he read it from the Bible. Noah's Ark, David and Goliath, Moses. And I was a little, believe it or not, I was this small once. Small. And he taught me that. I didn't have a chance to know anything else. I didn't know anything about G.I. Joe or Superman, Batman. Plastic Man, Rubber Man, whatever man out there is. I didn't know any of those. My heroes were Samson and Moses and, and, uh, and David. Remember, Jesus did not come here for us to put him and love him as all. He came here to die for our sins and those that, are the, those that receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior will be with him. But here's an example here. Here's Solomon. Let me give you some background to Solomon. Solomon was the richest and wisest man on the planet at one time. This is written in 1004 BC, a little over a thousand years before the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Solomon was David's son. Now, you want to talk about a man with a testimony? This man had it. <laughs> David was the king of Israel. And he raised Solomon, his son, to take over the throne. King Solomon, in all his wisdom, and God, God asked him, listen to this, I'm going to ask you this question, and just think to yourself. If you were to ask God for anything, what would it be? Would it be a person? Would it be a thing? All the money in the world? Health? What would 
you ask of God? Solomon was given that opportunity. God says, I will give you anything you anything your heart desires, I will give it to you. I want all the money in the world. No, he didn't ask for that. What's wrong with him? I want to be the most popular person in the world. Nope. I want to have a lot of women after me. What's wrong with you? Nope, didn't ask for that. What did he ask for? Wisdom. Wisdom. Mm -hmm. Now you probably thought he just wasted God's time asking for wisdom. Mm -hmm. I would have asked for a million bucks. I would have asked for money. I would have asked help. Well, listen to this. Yeah. Most wisdom. <laughs> comes from learning, but sometimes it takes more than once to get it right. From our, not anyone else, we've got to own it, the states. The more mistakes, you have to, I know a lot of people that make so many mistakes, they're probably the wisest people in the world. Yeah, they're right. <laughs> Woo! Full of scars and everything else, but they learned, they got it right. <laughs> True wisdom. Real wisdom. Godly wisdom. Bible's wisdom. Comes from knowing or knowledge without ever making a mistake. Whoa, Pastor. I don't think a single person has done that. Well, you know what? That's real wisdom, then. It comes from knowing. Do you have to smoke pot before you know it's bad? Or do you have to drink, get drunk to know what it's like to get drunk? I know a lot of people that say, I need to experience things in life. What they're really saying is, I want to sin every sin I can. Mm -hmm. Nope. Real wisdom comes from knowing without even ever making that mistake. So let's look here at this. Solomon was the wisest man in the world. Some of it came from this. He learned from his father. He actually listened to his father. He, I mean, does your father give you wisdom? Or did he joke with you? Or what, or what does he do? My father gave me wisdom. Pretty blunt wisdom, too. This is right. This is wrong. I don't care if you're 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. This will always be right and this will always be wrong. Amen? That's wisdom. You can't go out and shoot somebody. That's a crime. That's wisdom. Don't shoot someone and go to jail. Oh, now it's a crime. Now I know. You know, could have my V8 kind of thing. <laughs> Most wisdom. But Solomon learned the hard way in, in chapter 7 about something that not only affected him, but it affected the nation. And this is something that we need to understand about sin. Sin never only involves us. It involves everybody. If you get pregnant out of wedlock, who's going to support that baby? Mom, dad, older brother, older sister, the government, Lone Star, Wick. Am I wrong or what? Preach. Yeah. It affects everybody. It's one of the worst plagues of all. And if you get a, a, the worst president leading our nation, it affects everybody. Mm -hmm. I am going to run for president one day, doggone it. I'm going to win this thing. Praise God. Amen. Got my first vote. I'm just saying, right there. <laughs> Got to beat what's in there now. Yeah, right there. 
Anything would be what's in there then. Look at, cha uh, look at chapter 7, verse 1. Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, fire, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offerings and sacrifices and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. And the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. Let me tell you something. When God's presence is in there, it is so enveloping and so dominant and so intense mm -hmm. that our own imperfect nature cannot be imperfect in, a, in His perfect state. Verse 3 says, And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worship. There was no, oops, this is dirty. I can't bend down. Let me just sit here. <laughs> you know people like that? Mm -hmm. I don't want to why because I'm going to hurt my nails. The guy says, I got a bad back. I can't do it. it what does it say in verse 3? It says, all the children of Israel, if they had back problems, uh, if they had issues, they still got on their hands and knees. And folks, if there's anyone that deserves our complete attention and submission, it is the Lord God Almighty. Mm -hmm. God doesn't care if you're sick. He will heal you. It's no big deal. He praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before the Lord. And get, listen to this. You want to talk about beef? Here's the beef right here. Mm -hmm. King Solomon offered 22,000 oxen, 120,000 sheep. Talk about veal. There's your veal. So the king and all the people dedicated to the house of God, and the priests waited on their offices, and the Levites also with instruments of music of the Lord. And David and the king made a praise to the Lord, because his mercy endureth forever. When David praised by the ministry, and the priests sounded trumpets before them, and all Israel stood. Now remember, they're going through this. They were offered sacrifices and made a feast. Now, look at verse 11. Here's the key. When you praise and worship God and submit to Him, good things happen. When we pray and worship God and put Him first, great things happen. When we pray and worship God and give all that we have to Him, blessed things will happen. Look at verse 11. Then Solomon finished the house of the Lord in the king's house, and all that came into Solomon's heart to make into the house of the Lord. And in his own house he prosperously, prosperously affected. Now I want you to look at verse 12. And I want to tell you what, you get up and shout praises to God to this, because this should make you shout. This should make you happy. This should make you excited. Look who came to meet Solomon. John Wayne? Nope. President of the United States? Nope. Miss July? Nope. Who came to Solomon? Who was it that came to Solomon after all this was done? The Lord came. He appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, not only did he see him, he actually spoke to him. I've heard thy prayer and I've chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. Jesus Christ is here this evening. Why is he here? He's here for two reasons. Number one, because we praise and worship him. Are we perfect? No, and he knows that. But here's, here's something else. He's here to meet us this evening. In his appointment book, he put down crosswalk right here. And says, you know what? I'm going to that house in the sticks in the woods. I don't care if they had painted glass. I don't care if they have a steeple. I don't care if they have police escorting people out like some mega churches around here. Those people love me. I'm going to meet them this evening. Amen? <laughs> that was cool. But it says here, look at verse 13, if I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, Let me read that again. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain. Oh, God's mean. God's a bully. I've actually heard that from preachers. Or if I command the locusts to devour the land. Oh, that's so cruel. That's rude. 
or if I send pestilence, disease among my people. What kind of God would do that? Not my God. My God is loving. My God is charitable. My God would never do that. Well, then you're worshiping the wrong God because this God does. <laughs> He's a Father. That's right. Okay? He's a Heavenly Father. If we do wrong, we are disciplined. If we reject him and hate him and say, forget this, throw the finger, we get punished. That's punishment. That's punitive. Something is taken away from us. Something, something that will be taken away that will not make us the same again. What are we saying? That means that if we God is love and God loves us. And God forgives us of our sins. And I'm going to tell you something. God has our back all the time. He blesses us. But I'm going to tell you something. God is just. He's not a whip. He's not a whamsy pamsy. He's not politically correct. He's not hot and cold. He's not lukewarm. He, he is a God that is faithful to what's just and right. And if we're doing wrong, we're going to be called out on it. Mm -hmm. And if we're not walking the straight line, he's going to say, hold on, Bubba, what's going on here? That's a father. Yep. Father's down. There's my boy. He scored ten touchdowns. Yay! That's a cheerleader. Right. You think he's going to score ten touchdowns every game? No. You think he's going to score ten touchdowns for the rest of his life? No. What's going to stay with him? Athletic ability will go away. We will not run as fast as we used to. We will not lift as much as we used to. Our brain. What is going to last us? Wisdom, the lessons, morals, values, those things stay with us and they last forever. Mm -hmm. And we are teaching our kids not morals and values, but material things. A material philosophy that is based on human effort rather than God's will. We're teaching our kids right and wrong according to politically correct standards rather than the word of God. That's why Israel was suffering. That's why they got on their hands and knees. I didn't tell you what happened in the prior... Uh, chapters before. They were found worshiping other gods. They were burning incense to other gods. They rejected God's word. They told King Solomon to kiss off. They did everything they could to rebel against God. Then God got their attention and said, hold on, stop. No. You know, we have two dogs. And if they do something wrong, the first thing out of Kathy's mouth is, no. No. And then she tells me that you, no! <laughs> no! Then I love him. You. Then you love him. <laughs> but she doesn't love him and then say no. She says no and then loves him. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. They got on their hands and knees and they said, Lord, what is going on? And here's something about sin. You know sin blinds us and it makes us yes, deaf. It does. Yes. What did I do wrong? Exactly. It's his fault. It's her fault. It's the dog's fault. It's the president's fault. <clears throat> I'm not pretty enough. It's my parents' fault. No, it's our fault. It's our fault. You have not because you ask not. The door's not open because you didn't even knock. And the reason you don't have it is because you doubt it and not believe. How come that happens to her and not me? Maybe because you still are doubting. <laughs> you think God's going to reward doubters? He wants you to be completely submissive and trust Him. Completely. Absolutely. Without a shadow of a doubt. But if you doubt, you will do without. If you believe, you receive. It's just that simple. We don't make we make God complicated because of our own stupidity and ignorance. But God's real simple. Obey, bless. Disobey, curse. Real simple. I mean, you can't get any simpler than that. It's easier than following some recipes. Just do it. Be knocky. Just do it. It says here. If you know what the most important word in verse fourteen is, is if. If my people, if you're going to do this. Now, if, now, here's the thing about free will. Free will, again, as I said before, it's a fantasy. It's a trap. 
it's the part of the Burger King mentality. <laughs> Burger King mentality is this. God, I love 